Well, hello everyone and thanks for watching THV 11 News at noon. I'm Amanda Yeager. Today is the last day of our community stops for the 21st annual THV 11 summer cereal drive. It is one last chance to help out hungry kids across central Arkansas while school is out. Tom Brandon is live at the Walmart on West Bowman and on Bowman in West Little Rock this afternoon. He is joining us now. How are you today, Tom? I hear you had quite a crowd of THV 11 people coming oh, yeah. out to cheer you on. You bet. You know, Amanda, I missed you. I did not see you out here, but I realized somebody's got to stay back and put together the show. So maybe you can come see me at five o'clock today, right? Come on out and see me. It was a great surprise, a really nice surprise to see everybody from THV 11 that brought cereal out this morning. We're having a very good day. Now, we had to cover up all of the cereal that you see here with plastic. We can't serve wet cereal. We've had a few off and on showers that we'll talk about here in just a moment, but I'll say this between, let's say, Benton and Little Rock in terms of the most physical cereal boxes collected, I think the uh, Bowman Little Rock Walmart may have Benton beat just a little. We've got several of those watermelon crates of cereal. And we'll get a total for you at the end of the show. You got time to come see us. The Bowman Walmart Supercenter, we're here till 1230, come rain or shine. Right now it's cloudy, not too bad out here. Let's find out about that weather forecast. Back into you. All right, thank you, Tom. Hopefully you get some more people out there bringing cereal. I know they had a really fun day today. And yeah, we're going to have fun tonight, too. All right, with that, let's take a look at our first look at weather. And we have meteorologist Scott Coburn here joining us. Scott, it was hot when I went out, but it was cloudy. There's even a few tiny drops that today fell on me. Today is that transition day. Those uh -huh. showers, the thunderstorms. Tom's talking about the rain that you felt associated with that long anticipated Cold front is bringing with it the showers, the thunderstorms, the cooler air with the less humid air that arrives tomorrow for today. It'll be warm. It'll be humid. We're climbing to 88 scattered showers and thunderstorms likely continuing into the evening hours, probably through early tomorrow morning. Now it's not going to rain all day. It's not going to rain all night, but keep the umbrella handy just in case you encounter a few of those scattered and noticeably, as you can see here on future radar, isolated in nature showers in thunderstorms storms. Your rain chance for the rest of the day, anywhere between 30, 40, upwards of 50% chance. Again, not going to rain all day, every uh, hour, but there is a decent chance of rain. We're going to talk about what this cold front means for your holiday forecast coming up in just a few minutes. The national spotlight is on Central Arkansas. It's been one week since Lone Oak County Sheriff's Deputy Michael Davis shot and killed 17 year old Hunter Britton. His death was caught on has caught the attention of many across the country, and it will likely draw more as his family retains high profile attorneys. Hunter's family has now hired Devin Jacob and Benjamin Crump to represent them. Both were lawyers in George Floyd's murder case. The family is now confident they can get justice for Hunter. We've seen what they've done on TV. We know that they can handle the business that needs to be taken care of here. Hitting the site of the deadly building collapse in Surfside, the president met with rescue crews to thank them for their frantic efforts to find survivors in the remains of the 12-story condo that crashed to the ground last week. 18 people are confirmed dead, while 145 are still unaccounted for. The search for victims is paused because of concerns about the stability of the portion of the building that is still standing. The president and first lady will also meet with family members before heading back to Washington. A top executive in the Trump Organization surrendered to authorities today to face tax related charges. It comes after a two year investigation into the business practices of former President Trump. Bradley Blackburn has the latest from outside court in lower Manhattan. The Trump Organization's chief financial officer turned himself in to authorities this morning in New York. Alan Weisselberg and the Trump Organization are facing charges for allegedly not paying taxes on corporate benefits and perks. A former executive vice president of the Trump Organization believes Weisselberg did not act alone. Nobody does anything major without Trump's knowledge and usually approval. But in a statement, former President Trump said his company's actions were, quote, standard practice and in no way a crime. Some legal experts believe New York prosecutors are leaning on Weisselberg, hoping he will turn on Mr. Trump. But the two men have a long history together. The former taxi driver has operated behind the scenes for decades, not only as CFO, but also as the Trump family's personal bookkeeper. Replacing George this week is my chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg. And you think George is tough? Wait till you see Alan. 
Weisselberg's estranged former daughter-in-law is working with New York prosecutors. She turned over several boxes of documents to investigators. Weisselberg's attorneys say their client intends to plead not guilty and will fight the charges in court. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. The charges are set to be unsealed later today. Some of the alleged perks that were not taxed could include the use of apartments, cars and school tuition. That's according to people familiar with that case. The Delta variant is accelerating uh, the spread of the virus. And that is currently true this afternoon. The current spike in COVID cases in Arkansas has now reached a new high. Just under 700 new cases reported yesterday. The biggest one day jump in four months and six days. Let's look at the latest charts. On this first chart here, you'll see that it looks like there were more cases on Monday, but the state reported three days worth of cases for that day. And as you can see by the trend line for two months, we stayed below 200 cases a day on average, but that started picking up about two weeks ago when the Delta variant began to make its way through the state. The other alarming trend that has come with the Delta variant are hospitalizations. 325 Arkansans are currently in the hospital. We've seen that number go up by 114 in the last two weeks. More than 98% of those hospitalized patients have not been vaccinated. Here's Governor Hutchinson talking about the current situation in our hospitals. In terms of the hospitalizations, we're not seeing the same level of elderly because they've been vaccinated by and large. Uh, and we see uh, the mid range. It is those between 30 and 50 that has increased in the hospitalizations because they have uh, thought they were clear and they weren't. Now a positive note for those who have been vaccinated. New data shows the current vaccines may work against the mutated Delta variant of the coronavirus. Moderna says its COVID-19 vaccine protects against the more contagious strain first discovered in India. And a Pfizer official said the same thing last week. Meanwhile, for the Johnson and Johnson shot, the US Surgeon General says the one dose vaccine does seem to protect against that variant, but more research needs to be done to be 100% certain. A historic decision by the NCAA's board of directors yesterday means college athletes have a new way to make money. They can't get paid to play, but they can sign deals to earn an income from their personal brands, as in their name, image and likeness. The move comes after two dozen states passed laws allowing those athletes to be paid. CBS's Mola Lenghi spoke to three popular college athletes, including a pair of star twins, about what promises to be a game changer for college sports. Dang, this is crazy. <laughs> Just after midnight, college basketball stars Hannah and Haley Cavender found out they scored their first endorsement deal. All right, your contract was successfully signed. Cavender Twins times Boost Mobile. <laughs> the Twins, who play for Fresno State, received a deal with the cell phone company Boost Mobile. Just this opportunity is insane, and it's just so exciting for both Hannah and I. Now it's Hannah Cavender to her sister Haley. Player of the Year in the Mountain West, stepping back, five-point game. The twins are not just stars on the court, but on TikTok, where they post videos for their more than three million followers. This is something that we've been super passionate about for a couple years now, just making content and like starting our own brand. So I think it's just super exciting to see that you can obviously monetize it now. The Cavenders are now among other top college athletes who are hoping to turn their popularity into profit. Under the NCAA's new policy, student athletes can earn money for things like social media posts, appearances, autograph signings, and endorsements. The policy is temporary until Congress approves a federal bill, which is now in development. What does this mean for female student athletes? It's going to be huge for female athletes. Nicole Lauerbach is a college sports reporter at The Athletic. She says with limited opportunities for female college athletes to play professionally, the new rules will open doors. This is for a lot of them the window where they can make the most money and that they're the most marketable. So I think you're going to see a them be able to cash in on that while you know they are associated with their college programs and they are getting those eyeballs. The NCAA was under increasing pressure to allow athletes to earn money, especially after the US Supreme Court recently unanimously ruled the organization could not cap education related benefits. It's like Christmas almost, you know. Washington State University football player Dallas Hobbs has been pushing the NCAA to make this move. The graphic designer and artist says he's ready to show off his work in a way he wasn't allowed to before. You know, we've never really seen what college athletes are doing off the field and this is something that can show that. So, it will be able to show to the younger generation, hey, 
I no longer have to be truly an athlete. You can show that you're a businessman. You can show you're an artist. Are you concerned at all that the sport does get lost in this? I don't see um, too much concern over that. I think if anything, it's going to be more pure because you're going to see all aspects of an athlete. Hold, hold up, hold up. For the Cavender twins, who for years have been sharpening their skills on the court and building their brand online, the opportunity to turn a profit is a whole new ball game. Basketball and school comes first, but it's also really cool to think that we can work with companies on the side and be able to set ourselves up for success. Mola Lange, CBS News, New York.